we had dared to dream at a time when it really was an impossible dream. But impossible became the Supremes, the most successful female group of the 1960s. With 12 number one pop singles, numerous gold records, regular television appearances, and sold out concerts, Diana Ross, Mary Wilson, and Florence Ballard rivaled the Beatles in popularity. We became famous all over the world. We started traveling all over the world. We started hanging out with the royalty. We were on Ed Sullivan shows. We were on TV every week. They were poor teenagers living in a housing project when they first met in their hometown of Detroit. The Supremes started out as the Primettes, and we were actually four girls, Betty McGlon, Florence Ballard, Diana Ross, and me. We traveled around Detroit <laughs> doing record hops. Somehow or another, we got an audition at Motown with Mr. Gordy. Barry Gordy Jr. created Motown in 1959. It was the first record label owned by an African American, and the sound was a style of R&B fused with a pop influence. Unfortunately, he turned us down. I remember Florence saying when we walked out of the building, hmm, he can't be that great if he doesn't know how good we are. <laughs> We kind of went away, but we didn't go away because every day after school, we'd hitchhike and go down to Motown until eventually they signed us. Barry Gordy ran Motown like a movie studio. Artists were taught to dance, to sing harmony, and to talk to the media. It was like a finishing school for talent, and the young women embraced it and each other. When we started out, it was like I had met the other part of myself. I mean, because we shared this wonderful gift of singing together, and we all seemed to really, really want that. We became one. By 1962, the Primettes had become the Supremes, and it was now the trio of Ross, Wilson, and Ballard. Two years later, they had their first number one song, Where Did Our Love Go? We had about six, seven songs released before we had our first hit record. When Mr. Gordy put us together with Holland Osha Holland was when we found our sound. Between 1964 and 1965, the Supremes continued their hot streak and chalked up four more consecutive hits, including Baby Love, Come See About Me, Stop in the Name of Love, and Back in My Arms Again. We did the shows like Ed Sullivan, Shindig, Hullabaloo, and we were always perfectly dressed, and of course in matching gowns and shoes. Everyone knew the Supremes. They were individual personalities, as well as a collective unit, and they were among the first of the African-American acts to cross the color barrier with audiences. I had one lady, say, in, in Florida, after one of our shows there, I think it was at the Fountain Blue Hotel, and she said, I allow all my family to watch you girls when you come on the Ed Sullivan show. So <laughs> I remember my brother, who was like a Black Panther at the time, he was saying, Mary, how dare I say that to you? I'm like, but that's what's going on right now. People are not afraid of seeing black people, talking to black people, liking black people. Personnel problems erupted within the group. The press reported Ballard was drinking. And in 1967, Gordy decided to replace her. It just was not the same once Florence uh, was no longer there. I think whenever the original unit is no longer together, the chemistry, uh, the dynamics, everything has changed. And that was it for us as well. It was a year of change. Cindy Birdsong replaced Florence Ballard. And Diana Ross, now romantically involved with Gordy, was being groomed for stardom. And the group took on a new name. Uh, when Barry Gordy changed the name from the Supremes to Diana Ross and the Supremes, we were told that we could get more money with uh, two names. So anyway, there you go. By 1970, Ross decided to go solo, and Diana Ross and the Supremes took their final bow at the Frontier Hotel in Las Vegas. When Diana left, are you kidding? My life was over. However, I love singing. I love being on stage. I love entertaining. When I met Florence and Diane and Betty in the very beginning, they made up the other part of my life. When we disbanded, when they left, I was crushed. The Supremes continued on with Gene Terrell replacing Ross. The Terrell-led Supremes scored hits, including Nathan Jones, Up the Ladder to the Roof, and Floyd Joy. 
The group changed personnel several more times and continued to perform throughout the 70s with only Mary Wilson remaining as the original member. The Supremes officially disbanded in 1977, but their record sales have bridged generations. My career has been very, very beautiful. I'm very, very happy to have been a Supreme.